hello all for the past few tutorials we have been learning vlog and we were doing lot of simulation using model sim simulator so i feel now it is time to do some actual implementation and see how a circuit described in vlog get translated into an actual circuit uh, we are going to use a specific chip called fpga for doing this implementation as i mentioned in the previous tutorials vlog is a front end design tool uh, that means it is used in the initial design of digital circuits now that circuit can be implemented using different kind of technologies so two popular ones as asic application specific integrated circuits as well as fpgas now manufacturing asic is a very costly business usually that can be taken only by quite big companies and extremely rich universities those who are working in normal companies or universities our option is to use so called fpgas okay fpgas they are also quite versatile chips and they can actually implement any digital circuit now how this magic happens how fpgas are able to implement any digital circuit i already have a video in a different uh, playlist i will add the link to that video in the description of this video so first of all uh, it's better you watch it because we might be using a lot of terminologies in these tutorials also like uh, some of the internal details of fpga especially like uh, lookup tables flip flops etc now fpgas uh, there are mainly two vendors in the market one is silings industries they are the first one to introduce fpga and other one currently is intel now intel they came to the market very recently by acquiring a company called ultra Uh, they were market leader so silings and ultra they keep on competing and usually they have close to 50 50 market share although there are other small players like lattice uh, so intel acquired ultra and after that uh, it is known as intel fpgas the fpgas produced by intel but still a lot of documentation and a lot of places you will see the word ultra so that is just referring to the same fpgas produced by intel now when you are going for fpga based implementation using vlog you will have to use one of the vendor tools so if you are using silings you will have to use some software from silings to implement your vlog code uh, into fpga if you are using intel fpgas you will have to use the idea tool from intel to do it so i am going to do these tutorials using uh, intel fpga there is a separate playlist already using the silings fpgas uh, but that is little bit advanced so once you have done with these tutorials uh, you will be able to understand what all is happening there also now the fpgas produced by silings and ultra they are very very similar but these two vendors they use different uh, terminologies when they refer to the internal architecture of the fpga so while you are watching the internal architecture video that i will uh, link here uh, that is with reference to silings fpgas so there you will hear the terms lookup tables sluts flip flops clps etc now for intel fpgas they also use the terms lut and flip flop but instead of a word called clp which will be referred in the video uh, for silings intel or ultra they refer it as alm adaptive logic module so you just replace wherever you hear clp with alm and you have the similar architecture now again you don't have to be an expert on the fpga architecture of internal details of fpga to implement uh, circuits on fpga but after certain point uh, we will have to know some uh, architectural details so that we will see at that point so today's tutorial first tutorial i am trying to make it as generic as possible so we won't be discussing much features of the uh, software the tool itself but our aim is to get our circuit implemented on the fpgas so that we have a hands on of experience and i'll be going through the entire tool chain only explaining the important things as a beginner now first of all uh, i guess you have downloaded the software that we are going to use it is called quartus 2 uh, that's from intel and we'll be using so called the light edition which is the free edition and depending upon the operating system you can download it now one thing to notice here is intel they don't develop their own logic simulator so silings uh, their software is called vivado and this software comes with a simulator built into that 
Okay, so for simulation, we don't have to use a third party software like ModelSim. But in case of Intel, uh, they don't have their own simulator. Instead, they are going to use the ModelSim simulator. So there are certain ways to indicate ModelSim with this quarters that uh, I will show you. And ModelSim, again, uh, that comes as a standalone simulator and it comes with pre-compiled libraries for this FPGA vendor. So by model sim Intel FPGA edition, uh, what they mean is model sim simulator is there. In addition to that, uh, they have already compiled some of the libraries specific to Intel FPGAs and already kept them. Okay. So again, that comes into picture quite later. At that time, I will explain it. Uh, why is it so? So when you are downloading Quartus, preferably you download Model Sim also, but I guess you already have Model Sim. In addition to that, something that you need to download is the device file. Now again, these vendors, when they release the FPGAs, uh, they also comes in uh, different flavors like a uh, company releases uh, different kind of cars with different kind of features they also have fpgs with a uh, different kind of features so the name of those fpgs uh, they'll be usually called an fpga family name so as far as intel is concerned the families are the main families are cyclone stratix and aria so max and max uh, these are something called cplds so we won't look at them now uh, we are looking at only Cyclone, uh, Aria, and Stratic families. And among that, in the free edition, Stratic FPGAs are not available. You can see only Cyclone are listed. Even within the family, we can have like Cyclone 4, uh, Cyclone 5, Cyclone 10, etc. Like Stratic 5, Stratic 10 is there in the Stratic family. Now, if you are planning to really implement uh, your circuit on an FPGA, if you have access to a FPGA board, then you will have to download one of these device files also. If it is just like for, for just experience how to use the software, and if you don't have FPGA board, uh, you don't have to do it. But if your intention is to make it, build it on an actual FPGA and test it on an actual board, you will have to download uh, one of these files also. So which file depends upon which FPGA board that you have. I'm going to use this board uh, from Tarasic, who is like an official partner of Intel Com uh, Ultra. So this board called DE1 SOC board. This is the one I'm going to use. And in the figure itself, you can see, yeah, it is still written Ultra here. Okay, it is written like Cyclone 5. So the FPGA used here is a Cyclone 5. It is not exactly an FPGA. It is an PSOC programmable system on chip. Again, what is a PSOC? I have a different video. I will put the link there. But at this point, you don't have to worry about it. You can uh, still call it an FPGA. Okay, so we are going to use Cyclone FPGA, one board with Cyclone FPGA. So when you are downloading the software, uh, remember to download this device file also and keep all of them in the same folder when you are installing and uh, while installing you can choose to install model sim and this device file also so there are a lot of videos in youtube uh, showing like how to install quarters so if you have any doubt you can refer to them so i assume uh, you have installed quarters also now when we are going for development you should also keep the user manual of the particular board that you are going to use handy because we might be referring to the same manual again and again okay so again why we are doing it will be clear when we actually do an implementation okay so let's go ahead and make our first project like our hello world so once you have installed quarters uh, this is how it is going to look like in some windows 10 machines uh, i have faced difficulties in installing quarters i couldn't still figure out uh, why it is happening and in some cases um, unsuccessful in installing quarters so if that comes you will have to use some kind of virtual machine or something and install it there so as usual uh, here also you will have to first start a project so you can either take a new project wizard from here or under file you can choose new and this wizard will come from there you can choose new quarters prime project either way okay so whenever you start a project uh, of course you will have to give some name to your project and you need to say where that project should be kept okay. so let's call it like hello world since it is our uh, first project so here i will keep hello world now uh, quarters it requires the name of the top module 
uh, at the beginning of the project itself so here you can see like what is the name of the top level design entity for this project so if you are doing hierarchical design whatever is the name of the topmost module uh, that you will have to specify here itself i don't like it uh, so in xilinx softwares you don't have to do any of this but ultra they or oh, intel they still need it but you can give any name here and later if you choose a different top module uh, you can of course come and change the name okay so for the time being let's keep it hello world itself and next uh, we'll start with an empty project and if you already have any weblog file you can add it here i'm just starting fresh okay so I'm, I, I i don't have anything at this point and here is where you choose your target fpga okay so if you are using a off the shelf fpga board like the one provided by Terrasic, it will be directly listed under boards here but if you are in a company and you are building your custom uh, pcb with an fpga you will have to go and choose your fpga device here since i am using a board i will just go ahead and choose my board here so i have here de1 soc board and once i choose the board what is happening is the software he automatically knows like which fpga is there so here you can see the name of the fpga is uh, 5cse that automatically means this is cyclone 5 fpga and other terms basically say it's like what is the kind of package it is using and how many pins are there in the fpga you can also see the terms like alm here which i mentioned adaptive logic module which basically gives you an idea like what is the largest size of the circuit that you can build into this chip uh, it also tells you how many pins it have uh, that means basically how many input output uh, you can interface with this chip some rough idea and some other internal architecture details again don't worry at this point just choose the board that you are going to use and just finish here before finishing there is an option here uh, which tools you are going to use so you can see for simulation uh, you can choose model sim ultra here which will automatically link the model sim ultra software that you have downloaded with quarters okay that again i will show you later but for the time being you can choose it and you can see like uh, you can integrate a lot of other softwares with quarters okay so what each one of them again we might be seeing later at least uh, timing uh, we'll see other ones again uh, they are important like signal integrity if, if you are putting your fpga in a custom pcb like in a company in that case you will have to do some signal integrity analysis and uh, for our case it doesn't matter you can just say next and just finish and we will have this screen and here the name of the fpga is listed and here the name of the top module is listed if you want to change the board after starting a project you can just double click it then the same uh, wizard will come, come again here you can choose a different board if you wish if you want to change the name of the top entity just double clicking is not enough you have to right click and say settings then the settings uh, wizard will come there you can change it okay i still have hello world so just keep it hello world if needed we will change it later now this setting wizard again we will refer to that again and again because we have a lot of settings here uh, available so we might use it many times not only for changing the name of the top module so that settings is available under assignments also if you go to assignments yeah, you have device option there also you can change it from there also or you can choose settings also from there and you can change it from there also okay so let's write our first video code i am writing a very simple code basically this board uh, it has slide switches you can see and it has leds here okay so these slide switches they are connected to the fpgas uh, through the pins like this they are connected here and the leds they are also connected here there is no direct connection between the slide switches and LED, but you can make that connection using the FPG. So that's the project we are going to do. What I need is uh, whatever is the switch position should be shown by the LED. Whenever I turn on the switch, LED should glow. When I turn off the slide switch, 
LED should turn off. That's what my aim is. Okay. So of course you know how to write the code for that. I'm not going to explain the code. Uh, I'll just uh, put my final code here. Now if you already have that code written, uh, what you can do is you can go to project and go to the option add remove files in the project and you can browse and find the video code and add it. That is one option. If you do not have a code already written, okay, you can start a new file from here, either from here or from file, you can start a new. So there you can choose a vidlog source code, vidlog HTML file, and he himself has a editor, Quartus, and you can simply type it there. So let me quickly do it. Okay, so I have done with my coding and you can save it wherever you want, ideally in the same folder, uh, you can save it. And if you wish, you can simulate it at this point. So there are two options again, you can start your model sim simulator separately, simulate everything because of course you know where the file is or you write the file in some text editor, simulate it using model sim. Once you're happy, you add that file to the quarters or you can go to tools here and there is an option run simulation here and you can choose RTL simulation. It should automatically launch model sim simulator. Now for doing it, you need to first tell Quartus where model sim is installed. Uh, usually he will automatically detect it if you downloaded model sim and Quartus together and installed it. But some cases uh, he might not detect it. In that case, you will have to explicitly tell it. For that, you should go to options and there is EDA tool option. Under that, you need to provide the path to model sim. So in my case, he has already detected. Otherwise, yeah, wherever it is installed, usually if you install it together, it will be in the same folder where you have quarters and we have model sim ASC and you have to go to the folder this one, Win32 LOEM, that is where the executable is sitting. So you need to give that path here. And once you say OK, and if you say RTL simulation, uh, what happens is he will try to launch model sim, uh, but he will give you an error saying like analysis and synthesis should be completed successfully before starting RTL simulation. OK, so by basically, Quartus is saying uh, we should make sure there is no syntax error in our code and this can be synthesized before we launch the RTL simulation. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So on the left under task here, you can see an option analysis and synthesis. You simply double click it. So now what Quartus does is he's analyzing your code. Uh, basically he checks for all syntax errors. Uh, he will check for all hierarchy whether everything is fine. After that, he will be synthesizing your code. So basically your code will be mapped into lookup tables and flip-flops. Okay, so again, refer to the video that I mentioned about the architecture of the FPGA to understand how your circuit will be implemented by the FPGA. Now, if he can implement it, yeah, you will see a green mark here and he'll be all happy. Uh, this has nothing to do with your code. He's simply saying like, okay, I haven't specified how many processes my system has so that he can run something in parallel. Otherwise, everything is fine. Even under analysis and synthesis, a lot of options are there. Uh, we will come to that. As of now, he has only done analysis and elaboration, which include analysis part as well as synthesis part. So once that is done, okay, if you wish, you can launch simulation here. That means this will guarantee uh, your code doesn't have any syntax error when model sim is launched. So model sim will be launched automatically like this. And you can see we automatically compile your code. He actually created the work directory and he has kept the compiled code in the work directory. So if you go to work, you'll see like that hello world is already here. If you right click and edit, uh, you can edit from here itself or you can simulate also from this point, uh, which of course you know. OK, 
Okay, so I'm sure this code is correct, so I'm not doing simulation. I will just close it and I will uh, go back to Quartus. So now once you have done uh, analysis, synthesis, simulation, and everything looks fine, next thing that you have to do in almost every project is something called pin analysis. So as I mentioned, uh, these switches and LEDs, they are connected to the FPGA through the pins of the chip. Now this FPGA has hundreds of pins, uh, as I showed you like this particular guy has some 400 odd pins. Now, where exactly is the switches and LEDs are connected, you need to tell quarters so that when you say like switch equal to LED, uh, some signal coming on some particular pin. So as far as quarters is concerned, and this is the top module, so these are representing the input and output from the FPGA. So he treats them as some signal coming on some input pins and these are some signal connected to output pins. Now, FPGAs are so flexible that these input signals and output signals can be connected to uh, different pins. Okay. So you need to tell quarters where exactly these are connected. Now, if you ask like, why should we tell it? Because they are already connected, they should know it. Now, the board that we are using, okay, they might have connected it on particular pins, but that doesn't mean that they should be always connected to same pin. If you are making your own PCB, you can use the same FPGA, you can choose uh, LEDs as well as light switches, but you can connect them to different pins of the FPGA. So only if Quartus knows like on which pins they are exactly connected, he can uh, connect that pin to the corresponding LED. Okay, the pin where the switch is connected, that pin needs to be connected to the pin where the LED is connected. That is what your code says. Okay. So only if he knows on which pin number uh, these switches and LEDs are connected, he will be able to uh, do it. That's why I said uh, we need the user manual handy, then only we will have that information. We cannot remember all the details here. So you have to go to the user manual and there's a section here, any, any FPGA, board manual. This is not FPGA user manual. This is for the particular FPGA board that we are using. Uh, there it will be always listed, whichever board you are using. Uh, this pin information. So if I come here, here you can see. Okay, so these are our slide switches. There are actually 10 of them. So slide switch zero is connected to FPGA pin a, B, 12. So these are the names of the FPGA pins. So from there we will get that information. So this information we need to tell quarters. So for that you need to go to assignment and choose pin planner here. So this new window comes up. Okay, so here you can see all the pins of the FPGA. This is like you are looking from the bottom of the FPGA. You can see pins, all these are pins. They are like balls. We usually call it as a ball grid diary. So pins are arranged in rows and columns. So every pin has a row number as well as column number. That's how it is written here also. When I say AB12, that is row number AB, column number 12. So it is AB here, 12 is here. Okay, so this is where the slide switch zero is connected on this particular board. So that information we need to enter. So that you can uh, enter here. So I will quickly enter all of them for switches as well as for LEDs. Okay, it's so done. So in addition to the location, you can see some other options are the current strength, uh, stew rate for output pins, VRF group, uh, IO bank, etc. Again, at this point, you don't have to know any of them. Uh, just give the pin locations. That is enough. Okay, other features we will discuss whenever they are required. So once you are done, uh, you can close this one. There is no special place to save it or anything. It is already 
saved automatically so you can just close it and after that you can go to the next step under compilation which is fitter or place and route okay so before you go for place and route make sure you have done the pin assignment uh, again what exactly happens in place and route in the other video i am explaining so please go and watch it uh, this is the step where the circuit actually get mapped to the target fpga and wires are getting connected to the input output pins so once fitting is over you have to generate something called the programming file which is also called a bit file or bit stream uh, this is the file which will be sent to the fpga for configuring we use the term configure for configuring the fpga with the particular circuit that you have described again watch the other video which describe in detail what happens uh, with this bit string okay so once that is done uh, you are done now you can program the fpga so called programming the fpga you can configure the fpga and you can test it on actual hardware now if you want to do them step by step by clicking it uh, after analysis and synthesis and if you have done pin assignment you can double click this compile design and all these steps will be happening including the so called timing analysis and ETA netlist writer which we don't need at this point you can also do the same step under from processing so there is an option like start compilation and he'll be doing all of them for you now suppose after doing all this uh, you found like okay you want to clean uh, the entire project that means each of these steps they will be producing lot of intermediate files if you want to clear all of them and you want to uh, restart everything from the beginning you can go to project and there is an option clean project so everything will be cleaned from the project and you will start fresh your source code won't be clean of course but only the files produced by these steps will be cleaned your pin assignment that won't be also cleaned it will still remain there if you want to remove all those pin assignments in one shot you can go to assignment and you can choose uh, remove assignment and that will remove the pin assignment here you have the option what all assignment should be removed uh, you can choose pin location routing assignment and he will be removing those pin assignment then you can do the pin assignment again provided you want to do something like that okay so once this much is done uh, what you can do is you can connect your board so again depends upon what kind of board how you do it will be different uh, you have to look at the manual of the particular board that you are using for this particular board uh, you will have to give a dc supply here uh, for powering up the board in addition to that you will have to connect a usb cable uh, which uh, ultra refers as usb blaster 2 cable for programming the fpga for sending the bitstream from your computer to the fpga so you need two interfaces the driver for this blaster will automatically get installed when you are installing the quarters so i assume uh, both are connected and there is a power button on off button also available on this port which is a good feature i guess uh, it should be turned on and when you turn it on this particular board you will see like automatically the leds will be blinking and the seven segment displays will be showing something because there is a kind of default program uh, already programmed to the flash chip of this board okay so whenever the system uh, boots up fpga will be programmed from that flash chip and he is uh, showing the output of that circuit using it now instead of that default program that default circuit okay we are going to send our own circuit uh, which is basically this circuit that we have written and that will get implemented now fpgas they are volatile devices that means once you turn off the power supply whatever circuit got implemented inside the chip is lost so next time when you power on he will again load that default uh, circuit to the chip from that flash and he will again show it to you so don't worry you are not going to lose that uh, default program unless you rewrite your flash chip that we are not going to do at this point so uh, don't worry so once it is done and once you have connected cable everything you can go to this option program device option 
And here, first of all, you need to go to hardware setup and choose the USB cable. It will be automatically listing the USB cable if drivers are properly installed. If it is not showing, that means driver is not installed, you will have to reinstall it. So keep uh, whichever cable you are seeing here. In case of DE1, it will be listed DE SOC USB 1 cable. Okay, choose that one. Now here you will automatically see a file called hello world.sof. So SOF is the extension of the bitstream generated by Quartus. SOF stands for SRAM object file. Again, why it is called SRAM, you need to watch that video because that's how so-called configurations are stored inside FPGA. So SIF is there and below that you will see a picture which is basically saying like okay your target FPGA is this one. This is our FPGA 5 CSC MA 5 F31 Cyclone 5 SOC whichever we are using. So this he found out by reading this file. Now this file will be always in output files slash folder within your project folder. Okay. So ideally, in most ports, once you have this much, you just click on start and he will show like progress as 100% and your FPGA will be programmed. But if you're using this particular SOC based port, uh, that is not enough. It will still show fail. Again, reasons, uh, I will need some explanation to do. So if you're using this particular port or any port, what you can do is whatever is showing here by default you just delete it and click on auto detect here so he will detect a lot of devices okay so all devices are sitting on something called a JTAG interface again we'll explain it later from that you can choose your particular FPGA so this is our FPGA 5 CES EMA file so just click OK now he is showing two devices here now this is the FPGA one 5 CES EMA file you right click and choose add file here and from that output files folder you choose the SOF file now what just happened was okay this is FPGA but it doesn't have the full name only MA file but the full name is MA5F31 that he found from that uh, SOF file. Okay. So what you have to do now is you keep this one here and just this MA5 you just delete it. Yeah, it seems like lengthy and complicated, but if you really understand what is happening uh, later, uh, then it will become obvious. But I feel the programmer of Quartus is slightly messy. <coughs> compared to what we have with Silings. Uh, anyway, you have to do this much. And once you have done this much, you can click on Start. And now he is sending that SOI file from your computer to your FPGA board. And once it is successfully completed, it will show like 100% successful. So on the board, whenever I turn on the slide switches, that means whenever I move them up, corresponding LEDs will turn on. And whenever I turn them off, the corresponding LEDs will turn off for the lower eight slide switches. And this is what we actually describe using our circuit and it is behaving as expected. Okay, so that completes our first tutorial with Quartus. And with this, you might be able to do um, most of our initial tutorials like trying all the basic gates. That means you can model AND gate, OR gate, XO gate, anything. Uh, the inputs to the gate you can give from the slide switches and the output from the gates you can connect to these LEDs. You can also try small combination circuits if the number of input is less than 10. So each slide switch acts as an input to a combination circuit and the output from the circuit, a combination circuit, uh, you can connect to the LEDs and you can see the output. Now for building sequential circuit, okay, we will have to use clock signal also. So using clock signals here, uh, we'll need some more discussion. So that we will do in the next tutorial. Thank you.